City Council to order, please. Roll call, Madam Clerk, please. Council Member Bertani. Here. Council Member Moy. Here. Council Member Pandoro. Here. Council Member Tim. Here. Council Member Tonneson. Here. Vice Mayor Vicaro. Here. And Mayor Price. And we are all present. So, Madam Clerk, if you would, please. Public hearing. To hear presentations and discuss, consider, and take action to one, award preliminary approval, oper approval to operate a commercial cannabis retail business in the city to selected finalists, two, direct staff to prepare a resolution for adoption that authorizes the city manager to issue a commercial cannabis retail permit to operate a commercial cannabis retail business in the city to each of the selected finalists, in accordance with the requirements and procedures for operation in Fairfield Municipal Code Chapter 10E and any conditions of approval. And number three, provide direction to staff in identifying any additional conditions of approval, such as community benefits to be included with the resolution authorizing the issuance of a commercial cannabis retail permit. And our presenter is Senior Planner, Amy Kreimeyer. Amy, thank you very much for being with us again this evening. Thank you, Mayor. Um, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, welcome back to our second night of applicant presentations uh, as part of our uh, selection for commercial cannabis retail operators. Uh, so tonight you'll hear from the remaining seven applicants. Uh, again, each applicant has been allotted 15 minutes for their presentation, and they will be uh, given a warning at the one minute mark and uh, we will let them know when they run over time. And so uh, with that, let's just uh, get started. Uh, we are beginning tonight with Horizon Fairfield and their proposed location is 2349 North Texas. And we have uh, one presenter. Okay. Is my video on? Yes, can you, you are, and we can hear you well. Can you see me? We can see the slide. Um, video. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for our invitation to the Cannabis Beauty Pageant. Uh, it's, been, it's been great so far, seeing everyone. You guys have a lot of great operators. Uh, my name is Chris Hester, um, and I will be presenting on... Um, our project Horizon Fairfield. I'm one of the owners. Um, so let's get started. Sorry. All right. So um, Horizon Fairfield. Uh, so we have myself, Chris Hester, uh, John Swanson, and Sean Eady, and Adam Payne is our, our local cannabis entrepreneur as well. Um, Horizon Sacramento uh, started in 2008. John and Sean um, operate cultivation, distribution, and a dispensary. Um, been successfully operating there for, for a long time. Uh, 1841 is one of the best reviewed and top producing dispensaries in uh, Northern California. Um, and again, it's uh, we're, we're also cultivating. Um, so just a little background on our partnership. Um, I've known Sean and John for about 10 years. Um, and we all know uh, Adam. Um, and I helped... Uh, Open 1841 in Sacramento with them. And uh, recently they approached me for some business development opportunities. And um, based on our relationship with Adam and Fairfield, uh, we thought this would be a good opportunity and a good fit. Um, personally, I've successfully opened 10 retail uh, storefronts in California, and we'll be opening another three by the end of this year. Um, throughout the slide, I've placed some various accolades um, that kind of illustrate our various awards and high marks that we've received as operators in the cannabis space. Uh, a couple of notable mentions are the High Times article that was published um, that recognized 1841 Horizon Collective as one of the best dispensaries in the United States. Um, another notable mention is our weed maps rating of 5,000 um, unique uh, customers' reviews. Uh, we have a 4.6 rating. 
Uh, again, so we're a vertically integrated business. I know that a lot of the other operators have uh, made points about this, but uh, essentially, you know, this allows us to have a house brand that has a lower price point. Uh, this is a revenue generation tool. It brings in customers. And about 85% of those times, the customers are purchasing other products in our store. And again, you know, the goal of this uh, business not only is to um, be a, a strong community player, but to generate revenue as well. So uh, most of this is this presentation will be geared on factual information on pro on projects that we've done, completed, uh, and are operating. Um, you know, why why would you pick us uh, with all these great operators in there? Um, we're seasoned operators. Uh, we have roots in the community. Um, you know, we were one of the first retail operations to voluntarily move voluntarily move over to Metric. Uh, Metric is the seed to sale system that California um, uses to monitor all of the the product. Um, and basically, our willingness to cooperate um, with the state has allowed us to have one of the first of the ten licensed dispensaries in the state. Um, Another reason, uh, proof of funds. Uh, we have $4 million liquid in a bank account. Um, oftentimes when you're looking at these operators, they have like a letter of commitment from a financial institution that says, you know, they have access to these funds. We actually have these funds in our own bank account uh, that we're able to use for the city of Fairfield's uh, business venture. <clears throat> Again, there's some more testimonials uh, scattered throughout this presentation on, on these various pages that you can see um, some of our accolades. So, uh, Back to factual information, I've attached our uh, receipts um, from Horizon Collective Sacramento to the city of Sacramento. Uh, so close to $900,000 we paid the city of Sacramento last year. Um, we estimate about $1.2 million that we'd be paying 6% um, gross receipts to um, the city of Fairfield. Uh, another fact, factual information that we have here is our, our breakdown of our employee base. Uh, we're primarily have female employees, 60-40. Um, uh, we have a large, diverse uh, workforce. Um, the majority of our employees are minorities. So we go over our location real quick. Uh, the proposed location is 2349 North Texas. Um, we like this location. Uh, there's a large traffic count. Uh, we have a visual uh, presence there. Uh, retail, obviously, is, is strongly supported by your ability to market and, and this location uh, right off the Air Base Parkway in North Texas, uh, highly visible, uh, good location for us. So uh, we have 10 dedicated parking spots um, and we also have an opportunity. So on the corner of Air Base Parkway in North Texas, uh, we're working on an agreement with them to have offsite rented parking spaces there. And then we have another 33 that are potentially available across the street. So basically we'd have offsite employee parking and then 10 dedicated spots for our customers. Uh, so here's some renderings of the facility. Uh, on the top left, you can see the tire shop and then what it, what it would potentially look like. I'd like to point out the door in the middle of the building right there is a is a express pickup area. And why that's important for us is that between 25 and 50% of our revenue generated is from express pickups. And what that's doing is People are spending more money and less time in our facility. And, you know, that's bro broken down into a science. Obviously, we have all these analytics um, and we know how we can generate more money is by servicing the express pickup area. <clears throat> so roadmaps and timelines. Um, so if everything is perfect, you know, we think that six months is, is doable, but it's unlikely. You know, this is the first time for the city doing this. There's going to be some hiccups. So we think anywhere between... Uh, six and eight months is, is a legitimate um, timeline. So our labor plan, uh, we, <clears throat> we basically go into the community. Um, Adam Payne has, has lived there for years. Um, his father owned a business there and his father owned a business there. So third generation Fairfield. Um, we identify underrepresented communities um, in the city, and we try to give them upward mobility through our business model. Um, so, again, we'll go back to our diversity um, and our gender um, equality uh, with our employees. Um, we always try to go local. Uh, it doesn't do us any good to import employees. So, between 90 and 100% of our employees typically uh, come from wherever we're, we're engaging. Um, So 
So our guaranteed payroll, um, again, is, is on the end right there. So about $2.8 million in payroll and benefits packages. Um, so two full paid volunteer hours uh, every year. Um, we also have labor unions um, accessibility. We don't, you know, it's, it's actually the law for us to allow them into our facility. Uh, we don't, uh, we don't care if they come during working hours or if it's, if it's after hours. So whatever the, the unions want, uh, we, we accommodate that. So typical employee benefits packages, um, pay volunteer opportunities, you know, healthcare, dental, um, job training, um, after they've worked, after employees have worked with us for, you know, over a year, uh, we will support them to go to community college if they want to take business classes or, or whatever they desire. Uh, we offer programs where they can uh, take uh, take other educational opportunities. Uh, so our community outreach. Uh, Adam Payne, again, uh, has been living in the Fairfield community for his entire life. Uh, he has a, a cannabis brand, a cannabis entrepreneur. It's um, run, run out of Sacramento, um, but he, he still lives in Fairfield. So part of our community engagement um, is through uh, PALS. So Adam actually uh, has experience in PALS. Um, part of our educational benefits uh, we we would provide as we've reached out to Alateen and, and Malatine, so like Narcotics Anonymous, Alcohol Anonymous, to have um, educational programs for, for youth. <clears throat> so uh, part of our monetary contributions, excuse me, I'm going to go back to uh, community relations directors and responsibilities. So uh, typical uh, scopes of work for Adam would be, you know, our waste management plan, our security programs, um, our parking, our visibility, um, our odor programs, uh, security guards, et cetera. And part of our youth, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go over our total monetary contributions for 2021 to 2024. Um, our community benefits plan, 5% uh, net income, about $1.5 million. And three point six million dollars in city tax, uh, six percent of gross receipts. So, uh, previous community benefits programs that we've done, I'll just point out one uh, with Merced that we recently uh, finished up. Um, there was an at-risk youth organization called Simple Equations. There, um, basically, uh, teens with uh, troubled pasts um, have a, have trouble finding work. Um, and job training. And so what we did is we purchased a food truck and it provides um, financial literacy and job training for some of these individuals that are having problem entering the workforce. Um, and we also provide them with a parking space in uh, the dispensary parking lot. So it gives them basically a significant stream of revenue um, all the time. So if they, if they want to park there, they can. If they want to take it to a fair or something, they do that as well. Um, We've also installed or working on a, a public mural installation at that dispensary as well. Um, so world-renowned muralist John Pugh uh, will be doing an art installation in Merced for us. And to date, I think we've spent uh, $100,000 creating that, that art piece. Uh, we've also done food drives and um, other creative uh, solutions. Uh, we don't like to you know, have a box of community benefits. Uh, we like to get in the community, engage them, and figure out what the best needs are. And oftentimes, you know, it's really us, you know, starting our location and and engaging all those communities while while we are in business. So um, I'll just settle up with um, one of our testimonials um, from a from a customer. Uh, Perhaps one of Sacramento's most gorgeous cannabis retail operations, 1841 El Camino, is a place you'll never want to leave. The atmosphere is akin to being inside the living room of an elegant home. And when you combine that with friendly staff members, there's no wondering why it's a popular destination. Best of all, 1841 El Camino proudly supports veterans, disabled, and seniors with a 15% discount any day of the week. So I, I myself, uh, also a Marine Corps veteran. Um, and so 
you know, we do, we do tend to hire uh, veterans and um, we support that. Anyway, uh, that is my presentation for you. Thank you very much. Okay. Council, any comments or questions, please? Councilwoman Moy, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Hi, Chris. Um, Hi. This looks like a, a, a great shop you have here. Is this a picture of the interior of one of your shops? Yeah, this is um, the 1841 dispenser. It's Horizon Collective, but it's DBA, DBA 1841. 1841 is the actual address. Um, okay. So there's some, yeah. So that, that's I was the, wondering the where lobby. that came from. I was trying to think, well, that was before the gold rush. Um, <laughs> I was trying to figure it out. But, um, and so um, the Adam Payne's business, um, Choose Karma, that's in Sacramento. Is Is that where? Yeah, it's, it's a, he's a, his business is actually registered in Fairfield, but so it's a it's a brand, so it's not actually. So he's like uh, he can purchase products or have someone cultivate his own product, and then he uh -huh. puts his brand on it, and then he retails it to uh, retail stores, sells oh, it to retail okay. stores wholesale. Okay, um, so uh, in your application, um, there was no outline of. Um, which was required for the, the for uh, educating the juveniles. Is that because what you just talked about, um, that you like to come into the community and work with folks or? Well, it, it, you know, it's an interesting concept. Um, so traditionally, traditionally, um, a lot of these youth organizations, um, they're getting federal subsidies. And so, if, if we're going to create like a legitimate platform to do that, there's like a really long, uh, there's a lot of red tape to get through. Um, oh. And so we're actually working. So the simple equations group in Merced, we're actually working with the university of Merced, some of the people that write grants and we're trying to create a program where we can actually put it in the education system. And to do that, it's just a really lengthy process because you have to get a lot of these approvals. Um, and so when we reached out, so we reached out to like Child Haven, um, Child Networks of Solano County, Solano County, Solano Community Foundation, First Place for Youth Fairfield location. And, you know, as much as we want to create a partnership with a lot of these groups, they're, they're you know, they're not really interested in having a cannabis partner uh, as their partner. Um, mm -hmm. And so what, what we tend to do is if, if we can't get around that, then we donate directly to the city and let the city donate to those partners. Um, or, or I'm taking the long route and trying to create this other educational platform that we can actually put into the, the, the schools. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I haven't seen that, but this is the first time we've done this in Fairfield. So of course we wouldn't see it here, but I haven't heard of it elsewhere. Um, your idea of the express pickup, is that like um, when I buy at Target ahead of time and then just pull in and pick up my stuff? Yeah, um, I like to, it, it's exactly like that. And I like to compare it to um, Starbucks, like app on your phone. Um, I don't know if you utilize that, but um, basically just on your phone, they can go on their phone and they can, uh, you know, it puts them in a queue and then their bag is essentially waiting for them. Well, when they get there and, uh, that, you know, I can't over, uh, you know, it's very critical that we have that because it keeps the flow of the customers moving quickly. And, um, that's important for us. So we do like 900 customers a day and, you know, like between three and 400 of them sometimes can be express pickup. And, you know, that basically program we've developed over a lot of time, you know, because we've been in business for 10 years, um, you know, we've really honed in on this revenue generation. Um, you know, a lot of guys, they, they say, you know, we're experienced cannabis operators. We've been doing this a couple of years. Um, you know, our methodology has, has kind of, uh, matured over a long time. And, you know, that allows us to do 900 customers a day. Um, you know, it's really, we pay a lot of attention to how we can keep that flow going. Okay. And you're still able to ensure that uh, people are the proper age. You check that ahead of time or when they get there or both. Yeah. So, um, for them to be able to do that express pickup, they had to have been a, a returning customer. Um, okay. and, and we like those returning customers because they know what they want. 
um, and, and they're easy in, easy out. Um, you know, obviously we don't mind educating customers, but it's just a, it's just a lengthier process. And you know, to answer your question specifically, yeah, you know, when they show back up, they have to present their ID to, to right. that express pickup window. All right. Well, thanks, Chris. Good luck. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Councilman Tim, please. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I just got a, a quick question. In, in looking at some of this, your CEO, John Swainston. Um, is, well, yeah, it's small print, but yeah, the CEO of, of the company here in Fairfield. I'm showing um, three licenses, but one expired. And specifically what I'm talking about is the one that was issued July 1st of 2019. And then it expired one year later. And it shows expired. Can you tell me what happened with that well, license? It still stays. Um, it just stays in the queue. We we still have. We just have another distribution license that we obtained. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't like we lost it or anything. Uh, I you know it's, it it just shows that it's expired. We didn't renew that license because we got a new one. A new one to take its place. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, there's a, we changed facilities, so we just got a new distribution license at the at the different facility. So, could you go back in and then, uh, I guess, kind of like paying your registration at DMV, re up this license, or is that license gone now? Um, we don't. There's no reason potentially, but there's no reason for us to do that because we have a new location, so we have a new distribution attached to that new location. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vice Mayor, please. Yeah, Chris, just a really quick question. Um, you mentioned labor a little bit. Do you have a uh, labor peace agreements in your other dispensary? Um, we've ha we've had them, uh, you know, we sign the labor peace agreements, but we don't, we haven't had them engage, uh, you know, at the level where the, the employees are interested in it. But you do so, have it. Yeah, we, I mean, we sign labor peace agreements everywhere we go. Okay. So I want to know. Yeah, that's not it's, that's not an issue for us at all. It's just, you know, it hasn't been very successful for them um, in our stores for whatever reason. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments, colleagues? Well, Chris, thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate your time. Okay. Uh, next, we will hear from JJVI Enterprises, and their proposed location is at 1990 Walters Court, and they have two presenters. They listed Valerie and Jim, but I only see Valerie on the list, so. We're can here. Us? Can you hear us? Yes, we can. Hey, hi, guys. Hello. Uh, please enjoy our 15-minute presentation. We would like to introduce our family, our business history, and why we are a strong applicant for the cannabis license in Fairfield. The effort and planning that went into the presentation is a strong representation of how we operate our businesses and plan to run a successful retail cannabis store. Mayor Price, Vice Mayor Vicaro, City Council members, staff, and Fairfield residents. My name is Jim Engelbright, and this is my wife, Valerie. We own JJVI Enterprises, and together with our family and our executive team, we would like to introduce The Bright Spot, our newly proposed retail dispensary and delivery service located at 1990 Walters Court. Growing up, I watched my dad, Bob Engelbright, build and operate three businesses in Fairfield. From a Shell gas station to a wrecking yard, and lastly, Tri-City Boat and RV Storage, which is still operational today. I learned from my dad how to have an open mind to change and to create new businesses to help Fairfield thrive as our community grows and has new demands. I take this closely to heart as I shift from my tow company 
and body shop to a cannabis business. In 1980, I started Roadrunner Toe. When I was only 18 years old, through dedication and hard work, I was awarded the AAA contract for the city of Fairfield. At age 25, I became the youngest contractor in AAA history. In 2002, American Auto Body came to fruition after we purchased and developed property at 1950 Walters Court. Acting as general contractor, it afforded me the knowledge of seeking finance, budgeting, working with subcontractors, timeframe deadlines, as well as challenging the challenges of obtaining materials. My family history in Fairfield dates back to my grandparents. There are ranchers here. My grandparents raised their two sons on Great Jones Street. My dad, Louie, and my uncle, Tony, graduated from Armia High School, and my dad would pursue his dream of opening up a Richfield gas station on North Texas Street. My parents bought their first home located at 1125 Missouri Street. Fairfield is my city of firsts. Dr. Zimmerman delivered me here in Fairfield. I attended my first school at Bransford. This is the city I started my first job, the city I married my high school sweetheart, this is also the city I helped start our first business, the city our beautiful daughter Jordan was born in. She now will begin her city of first. Her first school was Bigel Wilson, the city she started her first t-shirt business, the city she brought her first home in, the city she married Jacob Wolf at her home in 2020. For over 40 years, we have been self-employed. All three of our companies are the result of successful startups. Roadrunner Toe and American Auto Body Specialist work within strict state regulations, similar to the cannabis industry. We take pride in our ability to operate in a highly regulated industry and meet the requirements of state regulation and standards. We are familiar with retail sales through our daughter's business, Oh Shirt Yeah, located in the Vacaville outlets, her expertise in marketing and sales strategy will help us make the Bright Spot a branded entity. We have devised a powerful and diverse team of executives. Chris Cox, CEO of Be Green Legal, is my consulting firm. He will be responsible for strong cannabis compliance and SOPs for our operation. Josh Budafuco, he is our sourcing consultant. He will guide our team with quality control as well as inventory management. Shane Howe, CEO of Space Monkey Meds, he will add support to our supply chain. With his cultivation and distribution operations, Shane's business model aligns with that of the Bright Spot, which will vertically integrate our startup business. Our financial forecasting is broken down into two revenue streams, in-store and delivery. We have earmarked considerable amounts of funding for our marketing efforts in the second and third year to grow the company by creating brand awareness for the Bright Spot. Successful branding reinforces customer loyalty and increases repeat customer purchases. Yeah. Our first year forecast is based on 200 customers per day and an average sale of $85. Our deliveries per day is estimated at 60 customers at an average sale of $75. Based on these estimates, the Bright Spot's total revenue for the first year will be approximately $7 million. Our growth for our second and third year is based on 220 customers in store, with an increase for our deliveries per day at 100 to 140 customers, with an average sale between $80 and $85. Total revenue for the second and third year will range between 10 to 12 million. Flow Hub will be our point of sale system for our inventory tracking and reporting, customer verification with check ins and check outs. Within this point of sale system, Dutchie is a leading delivery order and fulfillment management tool. This will be applied for medical, adult use, in-store, and delivery transactions. This system will allow state agencies to review every gram of legal cannabis throughout the production life cycle to satisfy compliance requirements. This system will integrate with Metric, the state's track and trace system, that tracks cannabis movement across the distribution chain. We will implement a strict standard operating procedure for the secure handling of cash and inventory. This will ensure our cannabis inventory and earnings are accounted for. The currency handling program includes daily reconciliation and balancing of cash with the cannabis and related product sales. Currency that is stored separately in a secure vault on the premise will be removed at regular but random intervals and trans 
transported daily by an armored car service to our bank. We hire locally and firmly believe in promoting within. We support diversity programs and will continue to hire diverse staff. All training will be conducted at our headquarters in Fairfield. Weekly training sessions will be focused on company and industry performance, SOPs, and policies. Our business philosophy instills shadowing, cross-training, and personal development. We encourage and embrace educational growth by providing a reimbursement plan for full-time employees who enroll in extended educational courses within related fields. The Bright Spot will provide living wages above industry standards. Our managers will receive salaries between $45,000 and $75,000 a year. We offer a competitive medical plan as well as a retirement plan that has been funded since 1982. We anticipate hiring between 25 and 30 employees. Our general manager will supervise our sales, operations, and inventory managers. On our sales floor, we will have a sales supervisor and sales associates. Our operations manager will oversee our delivery drivers and dispatchers. The inventory manager will supervise our inventory clerks in our fulfillment center. The Bright Spot has been proactive in their outreach to our neighbors. American Auto Body Specialist and Roadrunner Road Tow are directly next door to the proposed cannabis business. We will follow our current practices of being good neighbors by continually and proactively addressing any litter and loitering as well as any traffic, nuisance, or odor control concerns of our neighbors. If there are any complaints, we may be reached by a 24-hour answering service, corporate email, or just stopping by. The operations manager will maintain a complaint log. Our standard operating procedures for our security staff is to conduct perimeter sweeps for loiterers, on-site consumption, grounds maintenance, and nuisance-like behavior every to 60 to 90 minutes. The Bright Spot will take all necessary steps to ensure a secure operations of the facility. We calculated exterior security measures to integrate with the principles of the crime prevention through environmental design. All vendor deliveries and the Bright Spot's delivery cars will be loaded and unloaded in the receiving areas within the confines of the building which is large enough to accommodate multiple vehicles. This also adds another layer of security for our staff. Perimeter controls were designed for the facility to support and enhance the existing physical boundaries and act as a deterrent. The rear of the facility will face Walters Court. This intentional design provides an entrance to the rear parking lot which circles around to the front of the facility. This allows the security team to monitor the incoming customers before they reach the storefront. A security fence is being installed around the perimeter of the Bright Spot's customers' parking to add an additional protection. During all operation hours, there will be two security guards on site. During non-operating hours, we will maintain one security guard. Security personnel will be stationed at the front entrance to verify identifications from customers, delivery transport personnel, and other authorized visitors of the facility. Exterior lighting was designed to enhance and provide additional security to ensure high camera visibility. The 17 exterior 4 megapixel cameras will provide complete coverage with no blind spots. The cameras have built-in infrared that allows them to function in complete darkness. The 14 interior cameras are 4 megapixel dome cameras with infrared and they have a horizontal view of 130 degrees. A license plate reader camera that has the capability to scan and record all vehicles entering and exiting the premises up to speeds of 81 miles an hour oof, and a maximum of 328 feet. Security camera footage may be remotely accessed by the Fairfield Police Department's dispatch and will be monitored 24 hours a day. The building will have motion detectors, door sensors, keypad entries, panic buttons, as well as high security doors with key fob or electronic lock access only. The alarm system at the Bright Spot will be installed and monitored by Alarm Tech, which has installed and monitored many of the city's Fairfield's buildings. We are currently constructing a 7,000 square foot block building at 1990 Walters Court, designed exclusively for this industry. The property is a one acre parcel 
and will have two access driveways that connect to Walters Court with 35 parking spaces, including two ADA parking stalls. This meets the city's requirements for one space per 200 square feet of retail floor space. The bright spot meets the requirement of 600 feet from sensitive use areas. Located on the outskirts of Fairfield, our location is a destination spot and is not in the walking path of teenage travelers. From our location, our delivery service can be downtown in any of the two surrounding cities, Susun and Vacaville, within 10 minutes. This will help the bright spot expand capitalization to our bigger customer base, as well as the city of Fairfield's benefiting from the sale originating in Fairfield. The Bright Spot Dispensary is fully funded by us with no outside investors or partners. The Bright Spot will be prepared to open their doors as soon as the permit process by the city and state is completed. For the past 40 years, the Englebright family has donated to the Police Activities League, the Levin Group, Mills on Wheels, the Opportunity House, Community Action North Bay, North Bay Healthcare Foundation Hospice, North Bay Dream of a Lifetime, Vanden Football and Soccer, Armio High School Football, Rodriguez Music Program, Wilsey Wood Basketball, Fairfield High's Auto Shop Program, Solano Warriors, Fairfield Lions Club, donated cars to the Fairfield Fire Department for training, created mock car crash scenes for Matt. We've donated over a dozen motorhomes to the homeless community. The Fairfield Dixon Vallejo Benicia Police Departments use our facility for canine training. Jim also is a board member of the North Bay Healthcare Foundation. We will work with the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District and the Travis Unified School District. Through these efforts, we will support the programs that will educate our youth on the effects of cannabis. We will commit up to 10% of our net income for outreach and educational programs. The Bright Spot will promote and provide tools such as articles, videos, training, and educational opportunities with direct links to the websites such as National Institute of Drug Abuse, here are some examples of our existing companies helping Fairfield be a better place to live. Our tow company has assisted the Fairfield Police Department by towing over 21,000 abandoned vehicles from the streets of Fairfield. As a silent steward of this labor-intensive, costly program, Roadrunner Tow has absorbed over $30 million in lost revenue due to all the costs associated with abandoned vehicles and motorhomes. In 2010, American Auto Body Specialist was approached and asked if they could help paint the City of Fairfield's police vehicles at a discounted rate to help the city stay within their projected budget. We agreed and painted 24 vehicles at a loss. And during the most recent fire outbreaks, our daughter's company, Oh Shirt sure Yeah, donated clothing to the victims of the fire. If the Bright Spot is awarded a license, we guarantee the money will stay local. Our proceeds will be spent locally within restaurants, local services, additional job creations, and taxes. Our money will not be made here, then exported to another city or funneled to another operating dispensary. Fairfield is our focus. We have proven that we are committed to the financial growth and wealth of our local community. We care and need Fairfield to thrive because this is our home. Our promise to you and to the community members we will put the needs of our city first and that they can count on us to be at our dispensary when somebody asks for the owners. Thank you for your time. Well, Council, any comments, questions? Councilwoman Moy, please. Well, um, that was different. Uh, we haven't seen one like that yet. Um, uh, it was, it was good. Um, just, it was, it was just different, uh, very, very, very local. Obviously you both are from here. I've known you guys most all my life. So, um, I do have some questions. Sure. Um, as far as, um, your estimates in the money that you expect to be bringing in, they seem lower than, uh, others. Uh, why, why do you figure that is? That's a great question. Um, through our consulting firm, B Green Legal, uh, which has uh, been in the industry for many years, um, those were the projections that they came up with. Um, they actually had higher numbers, um, to be honest, but Valerie and I um, were more of the uh, under commit um, 
Well, well is, we wanted um, to be conservative yeah, in our numbers. Yeah. So we didn't want to overpromise and under that's deliver. The, that's what I was looking for, honey. Thank <laughs> so, you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. So yeah, we actually came up with higher numbers. We we just we just felt more comfortable um, being this a new industry for us to come into um, uh, for the projections. I, I feel that we're going to exceed um, our projections first year. Um, and very confident in that. We just, those were the numbers we came up with for our uh, application process, and we just stayed in line with those. Okay. Um, so um, I went by your site, of course, mm -hmm. like I did everybody else's. And your site doesn't have a building on it yet, but they're doing construction. So I'm wondering when do you expect to have that done? And if you get a license, how soon would you open your shop? Well, that's a great question. Um, we're projected to be, we could potentially be open for business the first week of October. Uh, I actually had a big meeting this morning with all my subs. Uh, we're on track. Uh, we should have all the block walls up within the next 30 days. Uh, the, the roof structure gentlemen and the roof uh, contractors, they're ready to go as well. Um, yeah, we're ready to go. Things are going to start happening on the project pretty fast right now. So if you stop by in 30 days, you'll see the building. I'll probably be by there. I'm always around the city. Um, and then the last thing, everybody, we've talked about parking with uh, everybody else. And so I wanted to ask you about the parking spaces that you have there. And you sound like you're going to have a number of employees. And do you have enough for your employees and the people who will be coming in? Uh, great question again. Yes. Um, to answer your question, we have already allotted uh, parking spaces in our storage facility at Roadrunner Towing for uh, the employees that will be working at the Bright Spot. That way, um, all parking spaces will be available for our, our customers. So how far a walk is that for your employees? 100 feet. Yes, oh, that's a long we're right next door. We're the, right. the very next yeah. door. In fact, yeah. one wall is. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, I, I think that's it, but you did forget something in your video, and that is you are a NASCAR driver and she was your <laughs> daughter. We used to read about you all the time in the newspaper. Oh, so thanks. you don't like to lose, do you? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> all right. We that's love it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor, please. Hi, good presentation, you guys. Um, so my question is, I, I saw as far as the hiring, you, you guys both said that you would uh, hire local. What is your opinion or do you plan on um, signing a labor peace agreement? Good question. Thank you. Yeah, uh, no unions have approached us yet, but I actually I look forward to opening up dialogue with these folks. Okay. All right. That's my only question. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, colleagues? Exceedingly well done presentation. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Thanks Thank for you, your sir. time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we will hear from Responsible and Compliant Retail, and they are proposing to be located at 180 Serrano Avenue, Suite A, and we have one presenter tonight. Okay, we're ready if you are. We're ready for you. Awesome. Um, good evening, Mayor, City Council members and staff. My name is Lauren Carpenter, and I'm the CEO of Embark Fairfield. With me this evening are Ron Turner and Dustin Moore. We would like to thank the city for its commitment to getting this right for Fairfield and express our sincere gratitude for your continued leadership on this issue. Our business plan was developed by a team with over 350 years of experience across highly regulated industries, including more than a decade of legal cannabis retail operations. It includes folks that ran the campaign to legalize and then implement regulated adult use cannabis in California. This is bolstered by our partnership with Ron, who brings his significant local roots, public safety experience, and a genuine passion for community empowerment to our team. 
Embark has three operational storefronts in Alameda, Martinez, and Tahoe. We bring this proven track record of operations to this proposal. We have $2 million ready to be deployed for this project, ensuring we are operational this year. $2 million is well above the necessary capital required for operationalization, leaving approximately half a million dollars in reserve funding. Our five-year pro forma is rooted in our team's real-world operational experience and reflects the changing regional market. With our leadership team that has been instrumental in developing California's cannabis regulatory framework, we understand better than most the direction cannabis is heading with more communities licensing local cannabis retail, thereby increasing operators and decreasing market share. Much like the Inglebrights, that is why we intentionally provided a conservative pro forma, using a compound annual growth rate of just 10%, well below the industry standard of 25%, to ensure we too are under-promising and over-delivering. Our ability to generate meaningful economic revenue for a municipality is not an empty promise, but rather a proven model. Embark Tahoe was recently recognized as one of the top 25 tax producing businesses for the city, the only of the four cannabis operators to be listed alongside significant businesses, including Chevron, McDonald's, and Safeway. Compliance is foundational to how we serve customers, maintain safety, and manage operations. Our team undergoes rigorous compliance training as part of a two-week program, along with ongoing education for the lifetime of the business. We anticipate serving approximately 350 retail and delivery customers a day with a commitment to high quality customer service and strict operational procedures to protect public health and safety. All delivery operations will be handled in-house via our five discrete delivery vehicles with live monitoring, customer validation, and secure transfer policies employed. Our integrated operational systems with two-party verification have been developed to meet and exceed the standards set by both the city of Fairfield and the state. Compliance is overseen by a five-person team that includes folks who played pivotal roles in the development and implementation of our state's cannabis regulatory system. We are ready to hit the ground running with funding in the bank and a building waiting to be reimagined. Upon council's decision, we are poised to be open by fall of this year. Good evening. As you know, I am Ron Turner. There has been a lot of discussion about localism in these proposals. That is important and I applaud the city's effort to ensure cannabis operators have local roots. As I reflect on why I'm participating in this industry, it is important for you to hear from me. I am Embark and Embark is local. As a formal, former law enforcement officer in Fairfield and a father of a son that wears the same uniform in Fairfield today, I think you would be hard pressed to find another cannabis owner here with a deeper knowledge and track record of protecting the public health and safety of this community than me. I've learned that in this industry, there are a lot of owners on paper. With Embark, my ownership is not symbolic. If selected, I will be an owner of both the local business and the overall enterprise of this particular company. I will be working at the shop every day and with Embark, I have found a meaningful and long-term opportunity for myself and my family. So speaking of opportunity, uh, Embark is one of only a handful of cannabis operators to be unionizing. Our partnership with UFCW goes beyond a labor peace agreement, and it ensures we are at the forefront of setting a new standard for wages, benefits, and representation for cannabis workers in California. Our collective bargaining agreement is nearly final and will be rolled out across locations. Our robust employee compensation and benefits package includes important benefits, such as educational scholarships, free counseling, and transportation assistance. But we also understand the importance of ownership and the difference it can make in the lives of our team. In living our values through action, we've reserved 10% of the company to ensure our employees are also owners of this business. Embark will initially hire 20 employees 100% locally. We will first focus on hiring from the surrounding neighborhood as employees who work where they live are proven to be more effective and engaged. We will scale this number to meet demand as the business grows. Like all responsible operators, we share a commitment to diversity and inclusion. As a testament to this commitment, 100% of Embark store management are female and or minority, ensuring diversity is at the helm of decision-making. 
Embark Fairfield is owned by four people, Ron, myself, my husband, Dustin, and my dear friend and proven cannabis operator, George. Importantly, as Ron mentioned, he will be an active participant in the store, overseeing our day-to-day -day neighborhood and community engagement. Our good neighbor policy is grounded in high standards of behavior for ourselves and our customers and deployed through extensive and ongoing team training, clear internal and external communication, and accountability to our neighbors and community through a rapid response protocol and our local community advisory board. Embark and its representatives have spoken with each of the businesses in this commercial center, all of whom have expressed support or neutrality in the case of the DMV for this proposed use. But our community engagement goes much deeper, ranging from faith leaders and local educators to the business community and local nonprofits. Again, Ron will lead all neighborhood and community engagement efforts, bringing his decades of experience in outreach and the protection of public health and safety to this endeavor. Embark Fairfield will ensure neighborhood compatibility through our nuisance avoidance, mitigation, and response policies that proactively address and manage concerns. Our proven compatibility plans address noise, light, odor, traffic, parking, and more. We utilize industry-leading odor control equipment and waste management services. Our community outreach efforts include stakeholder engagement, open houses, and canvassing. Operating cannabis businesses today has taught me that neighborhood engagement is an ongoing conversation. And that's why our open houses will prove so critical as they allow us to welcome neighbors into the store prior to opening and pull back the curtain on security, compliance, youth prevention, and other vital components of operations. Gaining an understanding of what these businesses are and what they aren't empowers the community with information. We are proud of Embark's track record of zero compliance issues, which is a testament to our robust proactive measures and response protocols. Our safety plan details policies and protocols to ensure we will be safe, hazard-free, and prepared for any potential emergency. Importantly, this plan is highly actionable, as any plan is only as good as its implementation. Our emergency response procedures, fire suppression systems, and personnel training are built to prioritize and ensure the safety of our team members, customers, neighbors, and the community at large. Our security plan was developed and will be overseen by our chief security officer, Matt Carroll, in coordination with former law enforcement officer, Ron Turner, and in strict compliance with all Fairfield municipal and state level regulations. Both Matt and Ron are trained and certified in crime prevention through environmental design, which has been utilized heavily in our site and security plans. Our plan includes on-site security guards, strict access controls, extensive alarm and video surveillance systems, and strictly enforced policies ensuring inventory control and transaction security. The Embark facility will be protected with extensive on-site security staff and systems and supported by off-site monitoring. Every door, window, point of sale station, and interior and exterior area will be defended with a wide variety of sensors, alarms, panic buttons, and 24-hour video surveillance. We undertook extensive due diligence to drive site selection, mapping and analyzing 73 compliant parcels before ultimately selecting 180 Serrano Drive. We selected this site for three critical reasons. First, and most importantly, it is over half a mile from sensitive uses. Next, it is compliantly zoned and appropriately parked. And finally, it is conveniently located next to high volume retail, commercial uses, and main transportation arteries. We worked to balance discretion with ease of accessibility and believe our proposed location achieves the right balance to serve Fairfield without creating a nuisance. As noted in the staff report, parking at 180 Serrano is compliant with all city zoning and project requirements. We have ample parking for our proposed use with 14 designated Embark parking spots located within a lot containing over 100 available spaces. These pictures were captured at 7 p.m. last Thursday, which is prime time for cannabis retail. We are confident that our storefront will have more than enough parking to accommodate our customers without impacting the surrounding neighborhood. Our community relations plan is overseen by Ron and our community advisory board. This empowers community leaders to have an active voice in our operations and to hold us accountable to our commitments and ensure meaningful youth prevention and education efforts. Embark will do what it does in every community by providing 1% of gross, not net or profit, to the community, with 100% of these funds being directed by the Community Advisory Board. Given the importance of a meaningful youth prevention effort, 
we will also allocate an initial $50,000 to see the development of this localized youth prevention curriculum. We are incredibly proud of the board we created and look forward to working with these trusted community leaders to launch our youth prevention efforts this year. We strive to live our values every day and like all good operators, believe in the importance of active community engagement from paid volunteerism to neighborhood cleanups and much more. But I'd like to provide a few advisory board members a moment to tell you more about their participation in our board. I believe in the idea that legal cannabis uh, through Embark is the way to go for the city of Fairfield. When I learned that Embark was, was applying for a retail license uh, here in Fairfield, it excited me because I know that the funds that are going to be directed from the legal sale of cannabis in our community are going to benefit our community, and that's hugely important. At the heart of Embark, are our community advisory boards. Everyone on the advisory board is community leaders. We are known throughout the community. We have integrity. I think that Embark has really reached out and made us feel like we're a part of this. When I saw the other members of the advisory board, I was excited because the broad spectrum of persons that you have represent, you have business owners, you have educators, you have law enforcement. It's just an honor to be serving with them. And Embark is so involved in getting us really active and and showing us they believe in our community like we do and i think that that's something you just can't buy you have to really get into the hearts of the people embark fairfield's community advisory board is a testament to ron turner and to ron turner's legacy in this community i've known ron turner for about 25 years or longer. <laughs> Embark has shown me they believe in social justice. They believe in social equity. They believe in values that a lot of other companies have forgot about. I'm engaged. I'm involved. I'm committed. I really trust in Embark, and I, and I know the community will trust Embark once they see what we're doing in this community. Everything we undertake as a responsible operator is predicated on meeting the unique needs and priorities of the community. And while that's why having local ownership is so important, it's also why giving community members a seat at the table is vital to making the most thoughtful decisions. What I liked about Embark was that sense of caring. They didn't appear to just want to start a business to make money. They care about what it is they're doing and to be involved in the community, not just take the money and run. I think that with the team that Embark has put together to be as their advisory leaders, it's going to make Fairfield proud. I just feel like, okay, city, let's make some history. Understanding it is difficult to summarize the entirety of our application in 15 minutes. My hope is that we were able to give you a little bit of a holistic picture of who we are and who we will be if selected to operate locally. We are ready to build on Ron's legacy in this community and the region and seek to be a trusted, engaged, and responsible member of the Fairfield community. Thank you. Council colleagues, any comments, questions? Councilwoman Moy, please. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Lauren. Hey, guys. Hi, Ron. Hey, hi. I see you, Ron. Um, <clears throat> um, thanks for uh, putting up there the picture of the parking lot uh, at the 7 p.m. time. I think that answers a lot of questions that people have had about your site. Um, I think that clears it up pretty well and picture tells the story, doesn't it? Um, I wanted to ask you, when do you expect, if you got a license, when, when would you be open? By September or October of this year, obviously. So fall. Built, yeah, fall, like you said. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions or comments, colleagues? A very fine presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Okay. Uh, so now we will hear from the showcase, and their proposed location is uh, 101 Grobrick, Grobrick Court, and there are four presenters tonight. Good evening, everyone. Am I on? Yes, you are. All right. Let me start sharing the screen. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, Council Members. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to present tonight on behalf of the ownership group for the showcase Fairfield. Um, I, I also wanna thank you for the way you've, you've handled this process. Um, I'm sure that shifting gears right in the middle of this wasn't easy, um, but I know it was the right thing to do. Uh, and I very much appreciate you giving everyone the chance to present. Um, you've heard a lot of presentations from, uh, from most of the applicants. You'll hear the rest of them tonight. Uh, each of these applicants met the basics, everyone, uh, met most or all of the, the city and state compliance requirements. What I'd like to talk about is the fact that compliance really is a low bar. Um, and what we're looking forward to doing in Fairfield is living beyond uh, your expectations. And 15 minutes is a short uh, amount of time uh, to give a presentation. So I hope to hit some of the highlights here. First, I'd like to introduce you to our, uh, our ownership team. Um, uh, first, you've, you've asked some great questions along the way about ownership and licenses, um, and I'd like to maybe expand a little bit on what you've seen in the staff report. So this ownership group was started in 2012 in San Francisco. The one missing face on here is Gus Murad, who was the original owner. Um, in 2012, uh, Victor Wynn, who is an owner uh, and the CEO of this location, joined the ownership group. Um, Victor uh, joined at the launch of uh, a medical cannabis co collective in 2012 in San Francisco uh, called Purple Star MD. Uh, since then, he since then uh, he started some of the most popular and successful uh, cannabis brands in California. He also manages Greensfer, which is farming, distribution, and manufacturing uh, for this ownership group. Second is Brian Wong. Brian really is one of the top minds in in cannabis retail and in merchandising. He is the current CEO of Purple Star MD, one of our sister stores uh, in the city of, of uh, San Francisco, uh, comes with extensive uh, retail experience. Brian, by the way, started as a consultant, became an employee, uh, became CEO of Purple Star, and is now uh, a significant owner uh, in the ownership group. Next is Ivan Campbell, who many of you know. Uh, Ivan uh, is an owner and the head of our safety and security, uh, as well as our veterans affairs. Ivan is a 50 year resident of Fairfield, a uh, retired uh, Navy veteran, um, a retired Solano County Sheriff Sergeant, uh, retired from the Department of Homeland Security, uh, and happens to be an expert in uh, behavior detection analysis, which is certainly very helpful in this industry. Um, and I think you all know me, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but I've, I've been working in the world of public policy and public affairs for the last 25 years. Uh, including serving as uh, district director or chief of staff to the state senator who represented Fairfield, uh, and then the member of Congress who uh, represented Fairfield. Uh, I did grow up in Fairfield, grew up with uh, around many of you, um, and uh, am a very proud uh, graduate uh, of Armio High School. We believe we are beyond qualified. Um, we were very happy actually a couple of weeks ago that our flagship store in, Sac in San Francisco was identified uh, as one of the top 20 cannabis companies in the United States to work for uh, for 2021, which is really a significant accomplishment. Uh, we do have two of the most successful retail stores in San Francisco. I want to talk to you a little bit about seed to store and vertical operate uh, uh, vertical operations. Um, our brands are, are four brands that were created uh, in-house uh, by Victor uh, are in 116 California stores. And very importantly, when we're talking about compliance, we have zero negative reports um, on any of our licenses uh, in California uh, or anywhere for that matter. All of our licenses are in California. 
Um, we are seed to store, and that means we're a fully vertical operation. We have growing, uh, as you can see in the three in those three coastal counties, Sonoma, Mendocino, Humboldt. We do production, processing, and distribution in San Francisco. Uh, distribution of our in-house brands goes to 116 stores uh, in California. We do processing uh, and production for other companies and distribution for other companies as well. I know this is an issue that's certainly important to you and it's, it's very much important to us. Um, the showcase is well capitalized. The ownership group uh, operates debt-free, uh, plus we have an available $10 million line of credit. Uh, so there is no problem being able to move quickly. We have a signed letter of intent with the Northern California Carpenters that allows us to move forward very quickly uh, using local union tradespeople. Um, it is our intent, based on our assumption that permits would be issued in July, uh, that we would in fact be able to open in October. And as a group, we were having this conversation earlier today, we're absolutely committed to paying overtime uh, we're very confident uh, that we can work well with the city of Fairfield's planning department uh, and meet that goal of opening uh, in October. I want to talk a little bit about safety. Again, our focus is on beyond what's required. All of the operations in this store will happen inside. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, you'll see where the incoming uh, deliveries go. And that's a sally port that goes inside the building, scheduled deliveries only. Um, there are no off-schedule deliveries coming into the building, but all those deliveries happen inside the building where you have full safety and security. Any delivery vehicles leaving the, ability, uh, leaving the building, the delivery vehicles are stored inside the building. Um, products are placed in the, in the delivery vehicles inside the building. So you have total control of incoming and outgoing delivery inside the building. Um, obviously we meet not just the requirements for ID checks at multiple points of entry, uh, but with Ivan's background in behavioral analysis, we're gonna monitor that parking lot to make sure that people aren't there who shouldn't be there. Another important thing I'd like to point out is the city requested that uh, the properties be fenced. Uh, we have an option on this property uh, to purchase this property. Uh, we will own the property and we'll have every ability to fence in uh, the entire property and meet the city requirements. We, are, we will have 24-hour security, and again, Ivan uh, and Ivan's company, Signal 88, will handle all the security on the site, uh, and we have more lighting and cameras uh, than what is uh, required. Um, I wanted to clarify one piece that was missing in, our, uh, in the staff report, and that is our, our fire plan, which simply wasn't signed by our fire consultant. Um, we do have local expertise. Sean Byrne is a retired Fairfield fire captain. Uh, and then obviously Ivan, who are in charge of all of our fire safety and security plans. Um, not only are they have they signed off on these plans, uh, but they will obviously stay with for the, the training of the management team, uh, for training of all of the employees on fire safety and other safety needs uh, in the building. We are focused on uh, location by design. We picked this, this location on purpose because we're focused on destination retail and delivery. You know, we've all talked in economic development about the importance of uh, destination retail for the, for the tax base. Um, and that's exactly what, uh, what we want to do here. Um, we've picked the, industri the industrial area, uh, no residents, easy access from Benicia, from Susan City uh, for destination retail for obviously other regions. Um, and people will be attracted to this store. Customers will be attracted uh, because of the uniquely large product supply uh, that we're going to have in the store. And I'll go into that in, in a few minutes. We don't want to be a drain on the police department. We certainly don't want to be a drain on our neighbors. Uh, so with the 24-hour security, we can make sure not only that we're, we're keeping an eye on our property, but that we're keeping an eye on our, on our business neighbors um, as well. It is an area that has had uh, an ongoing problem uh, with the homeless population. And, and we know that we can monitor uh, what's going on there and hopefully be a, a, a solid partner uh, for the police department as well. We are community focused uh, and we are focused on building employees from within the community. Beyond strong wages and benefits, we wanna help create owners. Our starting wage is at $17 an hour, management starting at 60, um, health and dental benefits, paid continuing education programs, we are doing a 10% set aside for employee ownership with the goal of 90% of local employees and managers. One thing I'd, I'd like to touch on here, two things actually to, to answer a question I know that's coming. 
Um, we again have signed that letter of intent with the carpenters. We'd like to continue that strong relationship with labor and we'll absolutely sign uh, a labor peace agreement should we get the, uh, uh, the permit. We are offering one full day of paid volunteer hours um, for every employee, uh, not just management, but all the line staff as well. We're not telling them where to spend their volunteer hours. We're giving them eight hours to say, you pick the cause that's important to you. It's your community. You choose where you're gonna give back. It's important to us because what we wanna create is lifetime volunteers. And if we don't tell them what to do and let them pick which issues are important to them, we believe we're helping to create uh, lifetime uh, lifetime volunteers. We are proven revenue generators in our other stores. We paid out 2.6 million in sales taxes in 2020 uh, from our San Francisco retailers, 4.2 million in excise and cultivation taxes. Um, I want to get a, a little bit into a couple things on this. Um, we will not compete with ourselves in, in Solano County. We are hoping that this will become our new flagship store location. We don't want another location in Solano County. We won't apply for one because we don't want to compete with ourselves. Um, I want to talk briefly about uh, revenue projections. So in the staff report, what you see um, are gross margin numbers rather than total revenue numbers. What you see on here is total revenue numbers. We believe those are very realistic estimates based on our history of our, of our other stores. Um, and our estimates are based on in San Francisco, uh, there is one license for every 17,500 residents. Once you make those adjustments with the demographics in Fairfield, uh, we're quite confident um, we can reach that number. Why that's obviously um, important to the city of Fairfield is we're looking at $2 million in sales and cannabis tax in year one. And we are committed to 2%, not of that gross margin number, but of total revenue. Uh, 2% of that total revenue as our community investment. We are not going to create a foundation. Uh, it is our intention to invest those dollars directly into nonprofits that are already doing good work uh, in the city of Fairfield. Um, this is our approach to business and it's, it's Brian's, uh, Brian Wong, you saw him introduced on the first page. This is Brian Forpe's approach. Uh, we are committed to our people uh, with solid training. They're well paid, um, with good benefits, and they're empowered, like in those volunteer hours. Um, the, the, the proof in concept is in our San Francisco stores where we have incredibly low turnover. Uh, people like to stay working for the company. Number two is price, everyday low pricing. Uh, it moves product off the shelves. That's what generates that sales tax revenue and those community benefit funds. From day one, um, Veterans, seniors, and those with medical IDs get a 20% a, a discount um, on all the products. Number three is promotions. Um, recognizing that the, that the city has a ban on billboards in the city, um, our commitment to no billboards is company-wide. We've never used a billboard, have no intention of using one to guide people to the store. Um, we don't think that's responsible advertising. We use proprietary targeted advertising, largely digital using existing platforms like Weed Maps to target those customers who are of legal age uh, and who are looking for a place to purchase. Uh, finally, our project is, is a big seller, our product is a big seller for us. We have a very wide selection of products, not just our in-house brands, but for many other brands. And that, that's what makes us destination retailer in our existing stores. And we're quite confident we'll create a destination retail in Fairfield um, for the region. I want to talk briefly about education. We're obviously very much focused on prevention first. There is an existing state program, Let's Talk Cannabis, um, that is a very effective program. Um, and we'd like to continue using that program. And our belief is this, if all of the retailers in the state are using the same program, we're all pitching the same message um, of responsible use of prevention from youth, um, and uh, recovery programs for those who need it. We don't want to reinvent the wheel on our education program. We want to use what's working. Um, Ivan, as some of you may know, developed the prevention and recovery program in the Solano County Jail uh, and won some awards for it. Um, we want to put our money where our mouth is and we go back to that 2%, that 438,000. We want to fund existing programs in Fairfield um, that are doing the work uh, of communicating uh, uh, prevention. We do have a record of involvement in the communities we serve, and it's about time, talent, and treasure. We don't believe giving money is enough. Uh, we like to give of our time and talents as well. Um, we've already made uh, contributions as a company.
do the leaven before we even open our stores. And you can get an idea of um, which other organizations we're working with in San Francisco. We are dedicating one position to community relations to a community relations director uh, who will help us identify where to spend, spend that 438,000. Um, you know, Ivan and I both have been very involved uh, in volunteering in Fairfield and Solano County over the years, um, and we'll help that process as well. Uh, as you know, Ivan and I uh, both have Fairfield ties, have no intention of leaving and, and hope to keep those ties. Last, I wanna hit on equity. This is a 95% minority business enterprise. I am the 5% owner. Um, we are focused, number one, uh, since we're running out of time, I wanna focus on equity brands. We commit floor space to brands that don't have access to capital. That is probably the single most important thing we can do uh, to mentor, promote those brands, help them with advertising uh, and help make sure that their brands can succeed. Thank you very much for your time. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Hey, Council, any comments, questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for an excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next we will hear from SPCF LLC and their proposed location is 5113 Business Center Drive. And we have uh, six presenters, so it'll be just a moment. We're just Sean Kelly is going to be sharing, I believe. Can you guys let Eric Pearson into the... Yes, we can, Sean. Okay, hello. Can you guys see me okay? We can't see you or Sean. Okay. Hi. Hey. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Hello, my name is Eric Pearson. I'm the founder of Spark, a vertically integrated cannabis company that's been operating in Northern California since 2006. Spark is our community facing name, and the name you see on our materials today is uh, SPCF Inc. I moved to California in 1998 after the passage of Prop 215 that legalized medical cannabis. Some of the same members of Spark today, and I launched one of the country's first cannabis compassion programs where today we still distribute free cannabis to those in hospice and many other low-income and elderly patients. This program is active in each city where we operate and is one of the practices that guides and shapes our community as we continue to grow. 
I'd like to take a minute to thank you, Mayor Price, Vice Mayor Vaccaro, esteemed council and city staff. Permitting the retail sale of cannabis is a big step for many policymakers whose decisions must balance the needs of all community members and for staff who does the heavy lifting. It's no small task. In my 20 years of working with elected and government staff to develop cannabis policy and my close attention to the process we're having now, I must say that I feel confident that however many retail outlets you permit and whoever you choose, you'll be left with a solid program that is a big step towards righting the wrongs of the past. And you'll all, you should all pat yourselves on the back for that. I pride our organization in the extensive efforts we make to engage in policy and governance in the communities where we operate. I personally have helped to draft Senate Bill S SB 420, Prop 64, Sonoma County's cannabis farming laws, and I've been a member of the number of cannabis task forces ranging from medical cannabis policy, legalization, implementation, and Vice President Kamala Harris's District Attorney Task Force when she was DA of San Francisco. I'm also an active member of the Sonoma County Farm Bureau, where I participate on a committee focusing on land use and bridging the cannabis community with the more traditional farming communities of Sonoma. We view cannabis as a plant, a crop, an economic driver, and a product whose historic criminalization has devastated young lives, and particularly communities of color. We work to right these wrongs by sustainably farming, hiring locally, and going the extra mile to employ individuals who have come from our come from or live in communities disproportionately affected by the war on drugs. I need that. Um, Sorry about that. We've got the okay. screen to share. And <laughs> in addition to myself, our team presenting today will be Amy Jenkins, Joe Galeski, Sean Kelly, and Chris Daly. Amy, Sean, Emily Paxia, and myself meet the definitions of owners. Amy Jenkins has 25 years experience in public policy and community service with eight years of local government experience representing Solano cities as well as the county. She co-drafted the medical cannabis regulatory framework with the League of California Cities and is, an act, is actively involved in continuing to help shape cannabis legislation in and around the state. Sean Kelly's, Kelly has over 20 years of experience helping operate and optimize vertical retailers like Lululemons, Levi's, and Banana Republic and has brought the vertical retail experience including much of our technology we have today in-house to help the Spark team continue to deliver on its legacy of excellent operations and customer service. Spark currently operates five retail dispensaries, farms organically and biodynamically certified in Sonoma Valley, and manufactures cannabis products that we distribute to local dispensaries. We employ approximately 150 team members, all living locally to the communities where we operate. Before I hand the baton off, I'd like to say when you hear our team say, we've done this or we'll do this, you can count on the fact that we've been doing it for years and will continue to for many, many more years. We love what we do and we hope that shows in our presentation and ultimately a Spark Cannabis store in Fairfield. Thanks, Eric. <clears throat> Sorry for the technical uh, Apple update. Uh, I'm Sean Kelly, the President and CEO of Spark. And uh, what you see here on the screen now, finally, is our remodeled flagship store in Santa, in, uh, Santa Rosa. And uh, it's the design basis for our Fairfield store. We designed the store for cannabis experts and newcomers alike with express pickup for the expert, casual browsing and learning for those new to cannabis and home delivery, which is important for many who can't easily travel. We plan to incorporate all these experiences into our Fairfield location, which we believe is exceptionally located and perfectly compatible with the surrounding area. Located in the Green Valley Shopping Center with excellent surrounding traffic circulation, including multiple entrances with stoplights and easy access to Highway 80, 680 and 12, which is the start of a short drive directly to our Sonoma Valley farm. We have 61 dedicated parking spaces, including three ADA and over a hundred additional shared spaces nearby, more than enough to satisfy all our staff and customer needs. We are in a standalone building that is barricaded to the south by Highway 80, which enhances security. And we are also over 1500 feet away from any sensitive uses. Compliant banking, digital payments, and secure cash management are hallmarks of our operations. Due to our exceptional track record, we were invited two years ago to a pilot program for normal banking services at a publicly traded FDIC insured bank. Cash is securely picked up by armored car service and directly deposited into the store's bank account. What little cash we do carry on premise is directly locked into a bank level secure vault inside our steel reinforced storage. Customers can pay at any of our 15 POS terminals with debit or custom developed or our custom developed payments app called SparkFed. 
lets you pay with your bank account, just like Venmo or PayPal. In line with our mission, we look forward to bringing this payments application to the entire industry to help lower the costs and increase safe access to cannabis. We have, uh, with far as, as far as safety and security, is something we take very seriously. Our state certified security professional and director of security, Josh Reich, is also available tonight for questions. We have had no successful thefts during our operating history. We utilize a variety of security features, including design of space, roll down doors, a sally port, windows coverings, access control, video monitoring, and motion alarm systems by, monitored by a live agent 24 7 with talk down capabilities. As we do in everywhere we operate, we will develop a close working relationship with the Fairfield Police, and we will also provide 24-7 on-site security. The opening timeline is dependent on the land use, building permit, and construction processes, but we assume that Fairfield is comparable to most well-run cities and will take approximately four months for permitting with an additional eight to 12 weeks of construction to be done by local contractors. Working collaboratively with staff and cities we operate is something we pride ourselves on. And as you can see here, Santa Rosa is, is a city that we've done that for well over a decade. I do want to point out um, there, there was a, seems to be an error in the staff report. Uh, our, the no, revenue numbers in the report are actually net of cost of goods sold. So our, our correct revenue numbers um, are 4 million in the first year, 8.4 in the second year, 12 million in the third year, but we believe that these revenue numbers are very conservative. Uh, these, con these projections were made during COVID and, and we anticipate given our parking and, and access that these uh, numbers could be easily doubled. Um, our, a, uh, our, our three year um, outreach uh, and, and financial impact to the city is between 5.6 and $10 million inclusive of the outreach, local goods and services, employees, sales taxes, et cetera. I'd now like to invite Joe Golosky, our VP of HR, to help explain what it's like to be a member of the SPARK team. Thank you, Sean. At SPARK, we believe that our team members are our most valuable resource and our culture, policies, and employment practices reflect this. Our starting wages for entry-level roles range from $17.35 to $18.75 per hour, with managers starting at just under $60,000 annually. All full-time positions include excellent benefits, paid vacation, holidays, anniversary, birthday, as well as generous sick leave, health, vision, dental, life, disability, chiropractic, acupuncture, and employee assistance program, FSA, Roth IRA, and pet insurance. Currently, over 90% of our team members are full-time. We're not only committed to prioritizing local hiring, it has already been our standard for over 13 years. We understand the importance of having a team that's invested in the community that they serve. And as Eric mentioned earlier, we focus on recruitment of equity individuals who are residents that have been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs. We also have a signed labor peace agreement with Local 5 and look forward to continuing our relationship with 5 and Jim Araby to develop an excellent standard for cannabis in Fairfield. We're proud to be an organization that truly invests in our team and their development for over a decade now. 100% of our managers are from internal promotions, with nearly all having begun in entry-level roles with Spark, including myself, over 12 years ago. Investment in our team members can also be seen in our training programs. Outside of ongoing product, safety, and compliance training, we have dozens of other development modules that our teams complete. This is what we do. It's what we've always done, and it's a reflection of how we hold ourselves accountable for the well-being and success of our team members. We're very excited about bringing this successful model to Fairfield. I'll now introduce Chris Daly to discuss equity hiring and community engagement. Thank you, Joe. My name is Chris Daly. I've been a resident right here in Fairfield for 10 years. My wife's family roots span generations. Fairfield has been a great place for us to raise our kids, a great place for my wife to teach second grade, and a great place for my parents to retire. Not a place where the mayor actually knocked on their door in my campaign. We appreciate Fairfield's diversity and the community in our neighborhoods. At the same time, Fairfield suffers from increasing social inequity, including homelessness. So when Eric Pearson approached me about serving as community engagement partner for Sparks Fairfield Project, I immediately thought of the potential for community benefits and local hiring to address these inequities. This work has been my life's passion. During my years in San Francisco, I developed a great deal of admiration for Eric as he shared these values. Eric introduced me to Maitree AIDS Hospice and Compassionate Care. In 2005, he guided supervisors as we developed the nation's first medical cannabis regulations. 
In the following years, Eric grew cannabis at Opens Park's first dispensary on Mission Street in the heart of my supervisor district. This dispensary was not only beautiful in design, Spark became the model for cannabis dispensaries across the state. As local elected officials, you know when there's a problem in your district. I don't remember a single complaint about the operations of his dispensary or even the grows happening in one of the dentist neighborhoods in the West. Spark isn't just one of the best cannabis operators. They are a leader in community benefits and compassionate care. If Spark is given the opportunity here in Fairfield, I will fight beside them for my Fairfield neighbors who need a hand up, making sure the 30 full-time jobs provide meaningful careers for community folks so they too share in the benefits brought by Spark's proposal. Now, let me turn this over to Amy Jenkins to talk about Spark's good neighbor policy and the community investments. Amy? Thank you, Chris. I'm Amy Jenkins, Spark Strategic Advisor. As reflected throughout our presentation, Spark has a long-standing tradition of building positive relationships with residents and businesses in our neighborhoods. Our good neighbor policy includes maintaining updated contact information on our website so that neighbors can quickly reach out to us with any issues that need attention. As part of our commitment to being a good neighbor, Spark will develop an odor mitigation plan based on existing best practices and our extensive experience to ensure that an effective air treatment system is in use at all times. We will ensure that our Fairfield store is a positive presence in the neighborhood. Noise complaints, loitering, and nuisance issues will be monitored and promptly addressed by one of our trained safety hosts. To ensure customers are not exceeding the daily purchase limits as required under law, all Spark locations use a point of sale system that allows us to seamlessly manage local locations in real time. Much like our existing stores, Spark Fairfield will have an on-site member of the leadership team responsible for running daily operations and addressing customer concerns. The City of Fairfield will provide an emergency contact available for any on-site or off-site emergencies related to our operation. Spark will hire a local community relations representative in accordance with Fairfield Municipal Code who will meet and work with the city manager and his or his designee as well as other community members, business groups, and nonprofit organizations organizations. Volunteerism and community engagement is a foundational component of Spark's company culture. As we have in other communities, Spark will play an active role volunteering in Fairfield, organizing toy and food drives, meals on wheels, park and neighborhood cleanup. We already work with numerous nonprofit partners in the communities we serve, including La Luz, Sonoma Valley Education Foundation, Relay for Life, and The Last Prisoner Project to support and enrich the community. We also partner with local health agencies to enhance consumers' understanding of cannabis and its potential effects to facilitate safe consumption. In addition to the volunteer work we do, Spark donates equipment, working space, and services to those impacted by regional natural disasters, including fires. During the pandemic, Spark stepped up to help by manufacturing hand sanitizer, which was distributed to staff, customers, and local hospitals. We believe that, a commu that communities' priorities and needs change over time. In lieu of selecting a particular charity, our vision is to establish a community benefit fund by the city council. We will provide 10% of profits or a minimum of 25,000 in the first year. That will increase in the second year to 100,000 or 10% of profits. We also anticipate making direct contributions to various nonprofits. As stated previously, we are also very dedicated to compassionate care. Donate, we will donate 4,000 in free product every month to qualified low income medical patients who live in the city. And we will also partner with the local youth education, faith-based, and public safety partners to develop a youth prevention and intervention program. On behalf of the SPARC team, thank you for the opportunity to present this evening. We look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thank you. Council, any comments or questions, please? Councilwoman Moy. Hi, thank you. It's good to see all your faces. Um, I wanted to ask about, you don't use security guards, but you use um, safety hosts. What's the difference and do you have them 24 hours? Josh, you want to take that? Yep. Uh, so we call our uh, internal um, security guards uh, safety hosts. They are, uh, will be trained uh, PSO certified, proprietary security officer certified and hold proper BSIS uh, certification. 
Um, they provide and do the same duties that a security guard would. And we will have security on site 24-7. After hours, it will be contracted third-party security, at least one officer. All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Any other questions or comments, colleagues? Well, thank you very much for a fine presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Next, we will hear from Three Bros Fairfield, and their proposed location is 2445 South Watney Way, and there is just one presenter. Hello, everyone, and thank you. thank you guys so much for the opportunity to present. Let me just get this screen share up really quickly, and uh, we'll get started here. And can everybody see my screen? Awesome. So thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present. My name is Alita Lehman, and I'm the VP of Retail Operations with Three Bros. I am really excited for our Fairfield location at 244 South Watney Way. Uh, we believe that we will be an ideal cannabis dispensary here in Fairfield uh, community for many reasons, but really because we have a focus on health and wellness of our community, our staff, and also the planet. We really understand that it's our responsibility to offer high quality cannabis in a safe and accessible manner and also a sustainable manner in order to help all aspects of what goes into the plant. The values that really drive our team come from us being committed to the plant as well as the planet. Uh, these three guys right here are the founders of Three Bros um, and they've become bros of mine as well. They started Three Bros as a cultivation, and we have a successful brand throughout California, and a lot of stores carry us. Um, we go with the good vibes, high tides mentality, and we believe that our vibes are real. We like to be authentic and stay real in this industry. And we really focus, like I said, on the plant, on community, instead of focusing specifically on revenue and what we'll bring. And with that comes revenue. So we have over 40 years of cannabis experience just on our team and have built the successful brand, as I stated, with Three Bros, which has now developed into a retail store that we have in Santa Cruz, which is a thousand square feet. And we hope to carry these real and authentic vibes throughout the state of California, but hopefully in the future as it gets legalized, the world. The team that we'll be operating with here in Fairfield uh, will be myself as well as Chad Maxwell and our partner, uh, David Barron. Um, David has over 20 plus years in the Fairfield community, and he is part of the, he's one of the anchor members of the commercial community that we're planning on entering at 244 South Watney Way. And we, I personally have 10 plus years of experience in cannabis with retail operations. I've opened four successful stores with a company called Urban Leaf. Um, one of which the flagship store sees 800 to 1,000 people a day. Uh, so we have a lot of cannabis experience here, but I also am really passionate about education and cannabis. And it's one of the things I think that's really missing, not just in these presentations, but across the industry. So we'll go into that a little bit more um, as we go later. And then Chad Maxwell, he has over 20 plus years experience in developing and managing market-based solutions, specifically in food and agriculture, which aligns really well with cannabis and what we're trying to do. So he's come in to help us align better with our communities and integrate all of the different aspects of our business. This is a small team to start for Fairfield. However, we're starting with a small team because we aim to hire, train, and build our entire team from 100% local candidates in the Fairfield community because we believe that through education on cannabis, we can train those people and we can develop a more successful cannabis community in that area. We have five main things that we focus on, but here in Fairfield, we'll be focusing on manufacturing and retail. I'll just be focusing on retail today. However, we do have a manufacturing presentation that we'll be doing next week. 
this is our business plan. I really wanted to put up this waiting room here. This is just our uh, option for our waiting room. We have about approximately 1,000 square feet dedicated to this. And I think one of the biggest asset, assets of the space, which I'm really excited about, is that it um, has a lot of space, but also allows for discretion and safe access. So we'll have a security guard located at the front door, as well as somebody at the check-in booth to make sure that before anybody ever gets to a cannabis product, they have two points of check um, before they go in. So we know nobody that's coming into the facilities there. Also, this used to be Thompson Chocolate, um, which we're going to be utilizing that first uh, area, that front corner as our retail location, as well as if we're approved for manufacturing, the manufacturing will be in the similar space. So it will be set up similarly to how it was historically. Um, we plan to have an open floor plan. So this is our open floor plan, as you can see here from above the waiting rooms in the front. This allows for a low pressure shopping environment and also increased product engagement from the community. We really want to spend the time to educate people on what they're purchasing, why they're purchasing it, and making sure that they walk out with the right product. And that's why we have such a dedication to our staff education, because we believe through staff education, we'll have customer education and people will, want, will not only be happier, but the community is going to be more educated. Um, as I said earlier, I think it's really lacking. I don't think I heard anybody talk about the endocannabinoid system, the CB1 receptor, CB2 receptors, THC uh, to CBG. There's a ton of different cannabinoids that can be used. It's not just the recreational benefit of cannabis. Um, there's also a ton of other organic compounds within cannabis that have health benefits. And I believe that through that education, we are going to put ourselves above and beyond and integrate ourselves into this community. Our staff ed get educated before they ever go to the floor. So I actually have a rigorous training program and you have to take some quizzes and exams um, before you get to the floor and before you can help any customers because I want to make sure you really know what you're talking about. This also allows for us to have a really strong company culture with a focus on our staff and retention. We build everybody from the ground up. So all of our bud tenders currently um, at our current location, we actually have in our management team, which you'll see a little bit later. We have really stringent QC protocols that allow for full compliance and above and beyond compliance standards. So we have four checks before anything gets to the retail floor to ensure that everything has been fully compliant, checked and standards. And any new products that come to the floor will be trained on, the staff will be trained on prior to entering the floor. Our security and loss prevention practices are also above compliance standards. Every square foot of the store is covered with cameras. And we also have the double set of security in the front to make sure that the floor is safe and secure when you're coming in, but also that no youth are accessing it. The state allows for like about a 2% loss on products, but we've never at our store had anything above 1%. And we also have full operational SOPs, everything from how to check out a customer, how to do a return, cash handling procedures, how to restock the floor, et cetera, full operational that are guided by state compliance standards and not just BCC standards, but also HR standards and OSHA standards. This is the proposed location. Um, it's 3,400 square feet of retail space. And uh, we are planning to have a showroom window that actually would allow you to see into the manufacturing space so that there's some transparency to the consumer about how products are made and the products that they're consuming. Um, the waiting area has a secured entrance, and as you can see, plenty of parking. Um, we have 10 point-of-sale locations, and there's approximately 30,000 vehicles in that area, about half a mile. We know it's a little bit off the beaten path, but we think that's a good thing because it allows for the discretion and safety of the customer and the consumer. We have, as I said, 50 dedicated customer parking and then 20-plus parking for our staff. There's also four ADA parking spots, and the building's already ADA compliant. So with 115,000 people and only two potential licenses in uh, Fairfield, you're looking at around a 50 to 55K potential customers per dispensary. So with that being said, we kind of based our projections from our initial store. The store we have currently, we have a population in our um, 95060 area code of 64,000, but we have four other dispensaries that operate. So there's five dispensaries within that location um, operating with 64,000 people. And we did $5 million last year. With Fairfield, we have increased that projection, not only because there's increased traffic count, but also because of the population density per location, which as you can see, generates about $2 million in revenue um, for taxes. 
And then our retail products, we are we really pride ourselves on how we source things. One, the ability to create products on site allows the transparency for consumers. So David Barron will be um, consulting with us to ensure that we follow all the quality control processes from a food standard point of view, but also sanitization processes and allows people to actually see what's going on behind the scenes and what's happening with their products. We also have a wide range of SKU varieties. We plan to hold SKUs that will benefit any person that walks in and anybody that walks in has the ability to not only afford the product, but get a product that is right for them and it's going to work for whatever they need it. Uh, and we have a commitment to sourcing women, BIPOC, and locally owned brands uh, to support our surrounding com community as well as equity brands. So we plan on having a little Fairfield local corner um, that has all of our Fairfield and Solano County brands in there. And we really want to support local and very focused on supporting local and bringing up the local guy in the cannabis industry. And as you can see, even our labor is locally oriented. We'll have about 20 to 40 available jobs to start and probably more as traffic increases and depending on what we, um, if we're approved for manufacturing or not, we'll have between 60 to 120K management annual salaries and 17 to $25 an hour for our entry level employees. 100% of these employees will be hired locally with everybody building up as we go. So we have really strong training and leadership throughout our business, and we plan to bring that to Fairfield as well. All full-time employees will be offered health benefits, and we plan to work with equity programs to support underprivileged communities and communities that have been impacted by the war on drugs. Another thing I'm really proud of is our female leadership. It is a male-dominated industry, and uh, we, we develop staff training protocols that allows for a female leadership pathways I wouldn't be here today if I didn't have the support of the males um, in this industry and the three rows that we have. However, I believe that um, we need to continue that support and keep getting the female leaders there. So we have 66% of our management roles are our female staff currently, and 70% of our entire staff is female. This is our current store management team. Uh, Julia Russo, Tiana Tate, and Angelina Rodriguez all hold positions. Each one of these women started as bud tenders with us. Uh, Tiana actually was at a dry cleaners before she came to us and she had no cannabis knowledge and we gave her the experience and knowledge that she needed as well as um, training and within seven months she was promoted to a senior bud tender and then moved into a shift manager. So I think this really shows how we pride ourselves on building from within and getting everybody educated before they move into any management or leadership positions. Our community relations plan is also focused locally. Um, we are really locally oriented. And like I said, we wanna kind of bring up those little guys. So we plan on donating half a percent of all of our local community, um, our net sales to our local community from the Fairfield Community Services Foundation to the Solano Community Foundation. Half a percent of our net sales is committed and dedicated to supporting local nonprofits. We also will have 12 paid hours of volunteer engagement for our staff annually, and that's about 240 to start annually, but moving upwards of 500 to 600 hours of paid volunteer engagement. We also have a bunch of outreach that we do, and we tend to try and find what's happening in the community and where we can help. So in our, our community, we were really impacted by fires last year. Um, as I'm sure all of you are aware, in Santa Cruz. So we had a lot of displaced people, people who couldn't afford um, what they needed and also were suffering from anxiety because of the situation. So we were able to create programs such as the fire relief program where we were able to give people products at a lower cost so that they could afford them and have access to them even when they were displaced. We also focus on sustainability and social equity. So we worked with Supernova Women's Group in the class in the past, and we plan to engage with their social equity. Um, it's called Equity Works program, where they actually hire and train staff and bring them into the cannabis industry so that they can um, enter the space and have the training that they need. And lastly, we really wanted to touch on this. We know it's important. Uh, we've had 0% youth access at our current facility, and we know we won't have any youth access at this facility with our double check standard at the front door. We really pride ourselves, as I said, on education, on consumption education, safe consumption, and the right consumption. Are you consuming what is right for you and your body? 
Um, do you know about the endocannabinoid system and receptors? And we believe that through educating our community on the benefits and potential harms of cannabis, we will be successful. Um, full transparency on all of our education. Um, you know, it's not a cure-all. It's not going to do everything for you. It is something that we need to make sure that youth don't um, have access to. And we're committed to making sure of that through our education training programs and our education to the community. So we've also uh, have had David Barron, our local supporter. He's um, gone through and spoken to all of our neighbors and we've not received any opposition to our site location. And I think our location also ensures um, that we'll have less access to youth. So that's everything from us. And thank you guys so much for your time today and allowing me to present. I'm really looking forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you. And council, any comments or questions? Councilman Tim, please. Thank you. And, and my first question will be to staff, Amy Kreinmeyer. I'm a little confused in looking at what I have. I see a manufacturing license. I don't see a, a retail or dispensary license. They applied for both a retail license and a manufacturing license. Um, and so tonight uh, they were asked to present on their retail component. Um, and then when we hear the item, the manufacturing item, they'll come back again and present on manufacturing. Okay, and both retail and manufacturing will be run out of uh, South Watney address? Yes, that is what they're proposing. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions, colleagues? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we have our last presentation of the night. Uh, it will be from Walkerville Lake Corporation with a proposed location at 469 Lopes Road, Suite E. And there are three presenters tonight. Oh, it looks like one of them was in and he accidentally dropped out. see one of them. Okay. Sorry, can you hear us? We can hear you, yes. Perfect. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, city staff, city council, city mayor. Thank you very much for uh, allowing us the opportunity to discuss our and uh, present our application for cannabis retail for the city of Fairfield. We are thrilled about the opportunity and we look forward to the city, the com uh, working with the city, the community and the constituents of Fairfield to build this cannabis business. Can you see our, our slides by any chance? No, just the three of you. One second. Uh, 
Here we go. Great. We're going to go on to slide two. All right. So uh, with the suitable location on Lopez Road, a commercial and industrial zone with off the street parking for 10 plus vehicles, a secured area for a lobby and check-in area, as well as a secure garage door, uh, secure enough for loading and deliveries. Uh, if you can please go on the next slide. So why is Fairfield Clinical Center uh, the optimal partner? Well, we are local minority owned by a group of experienced operators that ensure uh, a safe and maintain the highest level of professionalism and compliance. We, we plan to bring the highest quality cannabis products at the most affordable cost to the community. We use annual and quarterly check-ins for discussions on company values and objectives and strategies. Part of these objectives uh, define not only short-term but long-term goals and our values are is the field that helps us to achieve these goals. Some of these uh, values that we hold dearly is we do the right thing, we hold each other accountable for our own, we do what's right, we practice right practices to meet these objectives, we treat everyone with respect, we execute and deliver results, we operate with transparency, and we lead by example. These are some of the values we teach and execute. As Latino operators, we commit to educating the Latino community on the medical benefits of cannabis. And some of these practices include holding bilingual cannabis 101 discussions every Wednesday. If we are afforded this cannabis permit, that is one of our short-term goals. We also ensure to have bilingual marketing tools such as brochures, things that are informative about cannabis terpene knowledge, uh, and of course the history of cannabis in not only English, but Spanish as well. We have over 40 standard operating procedures that ensures compliance, transparency, and safety in day-to-day -day operations. A little bit about the team. Uh, Juan Garcia, <laughs> he started his career as a professional license in not only the education background, but with his business. In 2009, they established SEA, Security Enforcement Alliance, uh, with over 250 current employed employees, uh, full-time opportunities given to mostly local individuals. Uh, Juan has also dedicated his off the clock time <laughs> towards helping the city of Fairfield Unif Unified School District, the special education department. Juan himself has dedicated more than 150 volunteer hours towards this project alone. Anthony with 16 years of security experience and education in the criminal justice department. Anthony is a long lifelong Solano County resident, an active counselor and mentor with the, sorry, with the Vacaville uh, Unified School District. He has created emergency site plans for the, the school district. In 2009, Anthony started SEA training facility with Juan, who trains and instructs individuals to become licensed security guards. Uh, Anthony, in subject matter speaking, uh, most of the companies that they work with for SEA include cannabis businesses. Next slide. Next off is me. Uh, I'm a little bit about me. I come from the cannabis industry with more than 10 years of management experience. I am the general manager for Lake Walkerville Lake Corporation and uh, hopefully soon to be the general manager for Fairfield Clinica Center. Next slide, please. A little bit about day-to-day -day operations. Operations will run from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. unless otherwise noted from city. Uh, day, during daily operations, a manager will perform the op opening procedures. These procedures mean upon arrival, the operator observes any uh, suspicious activity on the outside of the building. If there's nothing that seems any odd or off, 
inside or outside the facility, no security issues reported, then the owner will, the op opener will enter the building through uh, the front entrance and lock the doors until operations begin. All customers and guests will be checked in by the receptionist. First, the licensed security guard will check the identification card of the clients, ensures that not only that the identification card matches the person holding, but the person obtains more than 21 years of age or older. If they are 18 years of age, they must have a valid physician recommendation to enter the premises. After the security guard confirms the age of the person and verifies his or her ID, the customer will be allowed into the lobby where they are greeted by a receptionist. The customer will then provide the receptionist with his or her identification once again to be entered into our POS system. The POS system that we plan to utilize is FlowHub. FlowHub is able to not only manage day-to-day uh, -day transactions, but as well as the visitors inside the building at the time. Uh, next slide. So additional retail operation notes that we'd like to mention most of all that's really important to us is record retention. Records of all man metric manifests, invoices, metric tags, COAs will be kept in binders for seven years for all deliveries. When deliveries are made, there will be a checklist utilized to ensure all procedures and records are kept in a compliance, consistent, organized fun function. All records will be mentioned in kept in binders and if needed, easily can be pulled and identified for any needed documentation. Another note to this uh, topic would be inventory reconciliation. This will be done every month to ensure compliance with BCC and our state of California track and trace system metric. Another great, uh, I'm sorry, next slide. Another important topic that we'd like to discuss is inventory management. All of our cannabis inventory is going to be stored in food grade plastic airtight lid containers that are stored on food metal shelving units that are, are at least six feet above the floor. The inventory will be separated based on the type of product and will be ident identified using signs and tags for these containers. All inventory records capture the following information. The description of the item, the measurement, the date and time received by the facility, the sell-by or the expiration date of the product, and the name and the license number of the distributor that delivered the product. Signage and education is important to us. We have no overview other than a single floor with no provided, no private rooms, but no special design will be made at first. We plan to revisit that as soon as our brand and marketing KPRs are met. Square footage of the entire building is 25,000 square feet. Some of our short KPIs include gaining website control, uh, creating and developing a email subscriber list and creating most of our client base on websites like Weedmaps, iHeartJ. Signage within the customer facing sales floor will be informative signage pertaining to cannabis terpene knowledge, history of cannabis and strain knowledge. No exterior signage is planned and no cannabis products will be displayed from the exterior of the building. And for the financial plan, which is next, I'd like to turn it over to Juan. Yes, we had set a performa of a uh, performa set forward uh, with an estimated of 506,000 as a startup cost for our facility uh, with the 3 million proven funded in the bank ready to go. Um, we have uh, our first, uh, we estimate a low amount of uh, transactions so that we know that we can deliver that amount regardless of the city, but we anticipate a whole lot more. Uh, but at, at a low of a, a minimal of 100 transactions per day at $51, an estimated uh, annual val value of 1.8 million. We also, uh, we want to, with our permitted and, and permitted within right timing, we anticipate the project to be anywhere from six to eight weeks with no major construction needed. Um, 
we set these low numbers uh, for for a certain reason is so that we can know that that's what we're going to deliver to the city of Fairfield uh, with the bare minimum of that. We anticipate a lot more with our experience and our other stores that we already currently operate. Um, so I know that we will be able to deliver this amount, but uh, at a bare minimum. Uh, within after the third year, we are committing ourselves to delivering at least one dollar per ticket uh, additionally for the community. Here's our proof of capitalization, which is already in the in the bank. Um, we were self-funded. We started this with, um, you know, minimum wage jobs. Uh, myself and Anthony uh, starting a company at a you know grounds up, and currently still employing up to 250 employees. So we are committed to providing opportunities with growth and substantial benefits and packages. We have created the labor peace agreement between the company and ILWU. With this agreement, we established procedures for ensuring fair and orderly environment for the exercise of employees' rights to organize through collective bargaining union. Juan Garcia and Anthony Blanco currently have 260 employees and looks forward to creating more than 30 local opportunities for the city of Fairfield. Walkerville Lake Corporation team wishes to bring meaningful employment opportunities to the residents of Fairfield. Fairfield Clinical Center's general manager position will be filled by myself, Henry Berrigan, who is a leader with more than 10 years of management experience within the cannabis industry. Recruiting practices will look for professionally qualified individuals that possess a passion for delivering exceptional customer experience. We want to not only invite individuals who are from this industry, but individuals who are new as well to bring something unique to the table. We plan to offer great packages with competitive wages. The total number of employees we plan to recruit are 20 to 30 in the first year, then 30 to 50 in year two and three. And this is our onboarding process. It's pretty standard. However, I'd love to explain a little bit more. First of all, the floor manager verifies that there is a position available, submits a request to myself. I myself will work with Juan and Anthony for approval for the position that is available. If approved, it will be posted online. We plan to use companies like Indeed that can use utilize filters to find specific local qualified candidates for these positions. Once cleared, the background check is then as executed. If so, uh, verbal, verbal uh, opportunities are given and a set date is put out in place, but it's not concrete until that background, background screen is cleared. And um, the next slide pretty much shows what the first week of the employees uh, on the job training looks like. For day one is uh, paperwork, you know, they fill out their W-9 form, they will be introduced by the company handbook. Uh, Thank you. And next slide, please. Again, we just want to alliterate that uh, a lot of training goes into our uh, employees on their first week, over 40 week, uh, hours. Neighborhood compatibility, we have an outreach director that will oversee any nuisances, any complaints in a timely manner. They will submit it to myself, uh, the general manager that will do a further investigation, utilize surveillance and security measurements if we have to. And that's just a, a little rundown on that. So the uh, safety plan, all, all staff are trained on accident and incident reporting and have a binder that is compiled of incident and emergency forms. Our evacuation plans as shown above are our most secured form of emergency clearance. We have maps all around the building that show evacuations and uh, fire extinguisher placement. Uh, we have overnight procedures that every all staff and guards are trained on with 24 hour uh, security dispatch number, as well as 24-hour on-site security. Um, we will be uh, conducting uh, multiple rounds throughout the throughout the day, as well as uh, the facility and the back. We have a secured back uh, area for our vendors to come through, where they'll be accompanied by a security guard at all times. Um, 
let's see the next one. Uh, security plan facility uh, security as as told my. Thank you. Council Collins, any comments or questions, please? Councilman Tim. Yeah, thank you. I see in my notes that you filed an application for a Susun City business license. Are you guys planning or have you gotten permission to operate a dispensary in Susun yet? No, we uh, we have it yet. There's still a third round of last I heard third round still they're gonna have a third applicant. So there was only four applicants in total. Um, they already picked two. Uh, they're still I'm not sure. I haven't received uh, feedback back back from the city on who they're gonna select for the third one. Okay, but you're looking to apply in Susun then too as well. If if granted, yeah, I mean wherever I want to. My goal is to have something in Solana where I grew up in. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Councilman Moy, please. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> I have a question and you didn't get to talk about your security. So I'm gonna ask you about that um, because I know you have somebody who's an expert in security here and I'm wondering if you're supplying your own security or how that's gonna be because um, that wasn't part of your application it looks like. Yeah, so so we will be uh, you know using our utilizing our own security uh, company. We have a PPO license through the state of California. It is known that um, you cannot actually um, hold in-house security. You actually have to have a licensed uh, company, and and for that reason, we actually do. We've been our our company license been uh, active since two thousand and nine. Especially for armed guards, there's no such thing as in-house armed guards. Um, so that's one thing that we, uh, we're we known in the industry of the cannabis industry providing security. We provide security for some of the bigger uh, names out there, such as Cookies and other other uh, companies out there that are huge. So we're in, we're in multiple states and countries, including Puerto Rico. Okay. And <clears throat> so uh, will you have guards there 24 hours or yep. just, oh, yes. Yes, 24 hours with a, an additional offsite 24 uh, hour live, mo uh, live watch monitoring as well. Two-way two -way communication camera, as, as well as robotic uh, and drone capabilities for our camera system that we have. Good. Um, I think it's great that you're going to be, uh, you want to have something here local where you're from, um, in Fairfield or Susan City, and that you will be um, putting out educational materials in Spanish, uh, because as you know, we have a strong uh, Hispanic community here, um, and it's getting larger and larger. In Fairfield, we're 35, almost 40%. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Matt. Other comments or questions, colleagues? Well, thank you very much. This concludes our business this evening. Thank you very thank you. much thank for you your time. Much. And we will be reconvening on Monday for 4th of May for our next council meeting. And Mr. City Attorney, you wanted to comment, please. It will be Tuesday, uh, May 4th. I'm, we'll I'm sorry, Tuesday. And we, yeah. and we will be continuing the hearing. At this point, uh, we've now heard the presentation. So there will be public testimony on the 4th. And um, if the testimony is completed that night, you could begin, close the hearing and then begin your uh, deliberations for a preliminary determination that was outlined in the staff report. So we'll have to wait to see how long the testimony, of course, goes on on uh, the Tuesday's meeting. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.